as cubes and roots. And the first thing we're gonna go over are the calculator keys that you will be using. The first one, to square something, if you find the seven key on your calculator, to the left of that is a button that looks like this. That will take everything to the second power or square it. If you are going to square root something, you first have to hit the second key, which is in the very top left. And then you're gonna hit the X squared key. If you look above the X squared key, if you look above most any key on your calculator, they have all of these, um, let me make sure you're, I have the right color for yours. Yeah, depending on, some of you may have different colors, but whatever color your second key is, above each um, button there's uh, the same color. So like my second key is green. All of my uh, second commands or the thing to get to it are green as well. So you can hit those. If you're looking to go to any power, you can do this to the second power as well, but you can do any power, third, fourth, fifth, 100th power, you're using the carrot key. It looks like this. This None of this should be new to you. You did this last year. And the carrot key is right above this one, the X squared key. And then to cube root, this is the one that's done wrong the most. You must hit three first, then you have to hit second, and then you'll hit the carrot key. I tell you this because it should have a little three and then that sign. That is correct if it looks like this. It is wrong if it has a big three and then this. This is not right. All right, parts of an exponent. Again, this should not be new to you. This big number right here is our base. It's the number we're repeating. This one right here is our exponent or our power. It tells us how many times to repeat the number. Yours does not have a 16 right there because it shouldn't. I don't know how that got there. Zero as an exponent. Any number raised to the power of zero is one every time. Again, this should not be new to you, but I'm gonna show you why this is. So two to the fourth power means just so you know, it means two times two times two times two. Well, two times two is four times two is eight times two is 16. Two to the third power means two times two times two. Two times two is four times two is eight. Two to the second power means two times two, which is four. Two to the first power is two. And I just told you anything to the power of zero is one. But let's see why that is. If we start here to get from 16, to eight, we divided by two. 16 divided by two gave me eight. To get from eight, so we are moving this way. To get from eight, if we divide by two, we would get four. If we took four and divided by two, we would get two. And if we took two and divided by two, we would get one. And this will work for anything we did. So if it was three times three times three instead, we would divide by three down here and we would still end up with one. So that's why that works the way it does. That's why anything to the power of zero is one. Perfect squares. A perfect square um, is a whole number, so no decimals. Um, that's what that means, there's no decimals. It's a whole number times itself. So the first 10 perfect squares, the ones that you should know right off the top of your head, would be one squared, two squared, three squared. In other words, one times one is one, two times two is four, three times three is nine, four times four is 16, five times five is 25, and you should be able to fill in the rest of those. I've also given you a reference sheet that had the multiplication chart on it. You should have put it in the front of your binder. And if you did, you'll notice that all your perfect squares are already highlighted on there. And I've done the first 13. All right, so now a square root is the opposite of squaring. So to square something means to times it by itself. To square root something means what number did I times by itself to get that? So this is the opposite of squaring. Squaring. 
So positive numbers have two square roots. One is positive and one is negative. And this goes back to making sure you remember your rules for multiplying integers. Because anytime I take a negative times a negative, I get a positive. So that's why what it says, what numbers can you use to get the square of 25? In other words, what number times itself can give us 25? Well, we could do 5 times 5, or we could do a negative 5 times a negative 5. It's still the same number times itself. So this will be written as plus or minus 5. And then negative numbers, so like negative 16, have no square roots. There's no number times itself that can give us um, a negative 16. Because if we said negative 3, well then it would have to be negative 3 times itself, which is negative 3. Well, a negative times a negative is a positive. All right, radical notation, um, you have seen this before and it's on your calculator. We've already written the sign. The radical notation is this sign right here. It almost looks like a division sign and it is used to indicate the root of a number. It can look like this and that means um, square root. It could have a little two, which means square root. It could have a three, which means cube root. It could have a four, which means um, a fourth root, meaning the same number four times, what would give us something underneath there. So those are all things that they can have written, but the symbol right here is the radical, it's called a radical sign, which is radical notation. A non-perfect square. This is a number whose root is not a whole number. In other words, if we put in um, the square root of 182, so on your calculator, we would go second and then the x squared button and type in 182, it comes out, the answer literally comes out just like this. That means that it's not a perfect square. So then if you hit your best friend or your conversion button that looks like this, which is right above the equal or the enter on your calculator, it's going to come out 13.49 with a bunch behind it. This is not a perfect square because it is a decimal. To be a perfect square, it has to be a whole number. So this is how to write radicals in simplest form. You can, your calculator will leave it in radical form. Sometimes it might come out like three radical two, and that's written in radical form. If it comes out, um, like this, that's as low as it goes, but you it can change it to a decimal number. And then the last one, a perfect square. If you put in the square root of 144, you're going to get out a plain 12. So you'll notice decimal and then no decimal. So this one is a perfect square because there's no decimal. It's just a whole number. All right. Let's go to estimating non-perfect squares. So in a non-perfect square, it doesn't come out as a whole number. It comes out as a decimal, which means it's between two whole numbers. So you're going to find two consecutive two consecutive, meaning two integers in a row. So like one, two, two, three, three, four, those are all consecutive that a square root lies between. So it's what it lies between. So for example, if you put square root 52 in your calculator, thanks, it would come out as um, two radical 13. Once you hit your conversion key, it would come out as 7.2. Oh, well 7.21, which is what we got there. So we now know that the number 7.21 would be between 7 and 8. So when it says estimate, you're saying it's between 7 and 8. The next one says the square root of 136. So we did second, x squared, 136. Again, it comes out as 2 radical 34, if you were to do it in radical form. So 2 radical 34. So you're going to best friend it, your conversion key, and we get 11.66. 
So when you look at 11.66, the number 11.66 is between 11 and 12. The only thing that's different between squares and cubes, a square is a number times itself, and a cube is um, a whole number times itself twice. So you have the number and then two more times. So a total of three, but it's only, um, you need two more of them because you already have the first one. Again, there are no decimals here, they're whole numbers. So when we look at this, this means one times one times one, which is one. This means two times two, which is four times two, which is eight. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27. Or you could put it in your calculator, like this one you could put in as 4, and then the caret key, and then 3. So you do these ones on your own. So just like square roots um, are the opposite of squaring, cube roots are the opposite of cubing. So it's going to give you the final number and tell you... <coughs> <coughs> sorry, and tell you or ask you what number did I multiply twice to give me that final number. So all integers have only one cube root. And why? That's because to get a positive number, they all have to be positive. So 2 times 2 times 2 would be the cube root of 8. You cannot get this because um, there's none here because as soon as you have Again, it has to be the same number three times. So you can't have, if you do a negative times a negative, that will give you a positive, but one more negative goes back to a negative. So you have to watch for that. And again, to get a cube root, this would be my little three, and it looks like that. And your buttons are at the top. All right, so now it's time for you to practice what you've learned. You're going to be putting these in the calculator. If you need to remember how to do it, your notes are literally right here. Your keys are right there. So go back through and make sure that you use your notes to do those.